be quick. All right, I'm gonna try again. Hello, what's up, social media, Facebook world? I'm gonna wait for some of you guys to jump on. Facebook will not let me be great today, but that's okay because I'm going to share this. This, if you're watching the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're watching, um, if you get ready to watch me, I'm dealing with today, I, I try to do this every now and then, uh, Wisdom Wednesday. So welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. Hello, Sister Lee. If you like it, like and share. But I want to talk to you real quick for a couple of minutes uh, just to kind of give some wisdom on Wednesday, right? Before we get ready for Bible study or church or whatever you may be doing on this amazing, beautiful day. Um, but the name of the thing that I'm dealing with right now is characteristics of a godly woman. Hello, Joyce Terry. Characteristics of a godly woman. I know there are some men that may be watching this later, but I just want to deal with that. Uh, right now, I just completed a video that's going to drop in a couple of, uh, probably tomorrow, on my YouTube page. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On my YouTube page, um, which is Tanya Harden. So go and subscribe me now so you can get the full video dealing with a series that I'm about to get started. Hello, that I'm about to get started called Characteristics of a Godly Woman. So I'm gonna just give you a snippet on today. Thank y'all so much for joining. Hello, Rhonda Lee. Hello, Denise again. Hello, but hello, Anita from Louisiana. Hello, sugar. But um, I wanna Talk about this characteristics of a godly woman. Can you type that in there? Godly woman, godly woman. I again, I know men may be watching this, but I just want to kind of give you just a snippet of what this video is about that I'm super excited about. It's called Characteristics of a Godly Woman. One of the things about women that we don't realize is that I'm finding out, and I taught this, I've already taught it's a series that I'm doing with the women of destiny of my church that I'm dealing with right now called Characteristics. We're dealing with women in the Bible, and I'm gonna be doing this on my YouTube page as well. Hello, uh, Joyce, how are you? Hi, Anita, how are you? But I'm, I'm going to be dealing with um, characteristics on my page. I'm going to keep talking, y'all. So if you type, I'm going to go back and look at your at your comments because I'll get sidetracked. I'm not used to talking and all that. Hello, hello. Thank y'all so much for seeing the God in me. But I'm here to tell you about characteristics of a godly woman. So what, like I said, go check the YouTube page out. If you're watching a replay, check it out. So when I dealt with this, with the women, I didn't realize how uh, impactful it could be. It's life changing for me because I found out in this life called Christianity. And what I want to give you again on this wisdom when Wednesday is that we as women, we don't realize the discipline that it takes to be a godly woman. Can you type that discipline? It takes discipline to be a godly woman. You know, I remember my mom and I shared that on the YouTube page, how my mom, you know, I remember her not cussing and all that great thing. You know, she was just an amazing woman of God to see come up, but no one really went into the Bible and grabbed women out of the Bible, um, characteristics of women that's in the Bible that, cause sometimes you need to see other people that are doing what you're doing or other people that are in the Bible that, that can give you a relatable situation. And I found out with the characteristics of a godly woman is that it takes discipline. Number one, you got to be disciplined to keep your mouth shut. Uh, come here. You got to be disciplined not to put your hands on them. You got to be disciplined uh, to be in prayer. Come on, Anita, right? You got to be in, you got to be disciplined to have a prayer life uh, because it takes prayer in order to do this. And, and I'm going to give you three points. I have five, but I'm going to give you three. So you got to go see the other two on my YouTube, YouTube page, but I'm going to give you three that I want to deal with on today on this fabulous Wednesday wisdom. Number one, with the characteristics of a godly woman, of course, you got to stay disciplined. You got to be disciplined. Great book that's called Discipline of a Godly Woman that I taught with my women in my church. Discipline of a Godly Woman because, number one, you got to be disciplined, but you got to die daily. You got to die to self. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, there's nobody on this page that's watching this, that's watching the replay. There's nobody that's perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm the pastor, if you don't know, Pastor Tanya of New Destiny Fellowship Church under the leadership of Bishop Clyde Harden Jr. It's still takes discipline for me to keep my mouth closed. It takes discipline for me not to go and slap somebody. It takes me discipline for me not to have no clap back. It takes discipline in order to do this. So that means we got to die daily. Can you type that die daily? Hello. So great to see you, Miss Reed and Miss Darden. God bless you. So 
it takes discipline. See, I get sidetracked. Y'all saw that real quick. So it takes discipline, but you have to die daily. It's like Paul says, I beat my body and make it my slave. It takes discipline to eat right. Come on, somebody. It takes discipline to die daily. But in order to walk in the characteristics of a godly woman, somebody may ask the question, what does she look like? Like, what is this woman that you're talking about that died daily? What, like, what she look like? What, what is it? One of the things that she looks like is that number one, oh, she has to stay connected. Can you type that in the screen? She has to stay connected. Say, stay connected. Number one, you got to stay connected. How do I stay connected? You're staying connected to God because you can't do this without him. I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds like that's something you hear all the time. Oh, I got to stay connected. Hey, baby, it takes work to stay connected. It takes discipline to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning to seek God in prayer on my daily. Like, God, what am I doing today? God, order my steps in your word. Uh, for those that ain't that, you know, you're not there yet. Hey, there's some things. Hello, Valerie Green. How are you? Hey, there's some things that you got to do. If that's this, get in your car driving. And I talk about this on the YouTube page page is that when you get in your car and you drive and you say, you know what, Lord, on this day, I need you to order my steps. I need you to help. It ain't nothing deep. I think that's the problem that we do in church. We make it like it's just so deep. Like you just got to go all the way up into heaven. No, you just, whatever it takes, whatever your relationship is with God, you got to stay connected. How do I stay connected? Because when I stay connected, I'm able to have clarity about my life. Oh, can you type that clarity? I'm able to have clarity about the direction in my life. If I don't have clarity, I don't know how to stay connected that part. If I don't have clarity, I don't know how to stay connected. And when I don't have clarity, I'm able to listen to the lies of the enemy. I'm able to hear what the enemy has to say about my life or what others have to say about my life or what others think about me or what others portray of me or what people judge what they don't understand. But can I come and tell you when you stay connected, you have clarity. Ah, you have clarity about your direction. You have clarity. As a godly woman, in order to be a godly woman that's disciplined and die daily, you got to stay connected so that you can have clarity on the direction in your life. Can somebody hard it up if you feel me? Hey, you got a dialogue with me because I want, I, I just want to see your dialogues. Just let me know. That's your amen corner for me right there. That's your amen to let me know, girl, I hear you. Thank you for your comments. So you stand connected to God because I got to have clarity on the next thing that I want to do and the next direction for my life because if I'm not connected and if I'm not staying connected what happens is is that I start listening to the lies and the tricks of the enemy I start listening to the things that people got to say about me come on Kim uh, uh uh real talk Kim what they think about you ain't none of your business but when I when I start thinking about what they think about me or what they feel about me or if I'm not if I'm losing my uh if I'm disconnected from God what happens is is because I'm not connected how do I stay connected number one I got to stay in prayer uh-oh, that part. Come on, Anita, tell them, hey, and go follow Anita. This girl right here, she's all about prayer, pushing prayer. Follow her. Shout out to you, prayer pusher. She's a prayer. She can tell you how to get, how to start. Come on, heart it up, Anita. If you see her on here, heart it up, go to follow her. So you got to stay connected in prayer. Number one, take prayer because prayer will show you purpose. And when prayer show you purpose, you can get to the promises that God have for you. <laughs> That'll preach. Oh, I ain't trying to preach to y'all, but prayer will keep you to your purpose and then push you on to the promises that God have for you. So you got to stay connected because when you're not connected, second part in this number one, stay connected, is that when you're not connected, you start you losing your identity in Christ. You don't know who you are because I'm not connected. I don't know who I am. Why can I tell you this? Because I've been there as a pastor's wife, as a bitch's wife, baby, because when God want to do different things with you and you're not connected to him and you're trying to move in him, you lose the posture and the position where you're supposed to do to produce purpose. Thank you, uh, Lady Duncan, Pastor Duncan. Thank you. Yeah, that'll help me. Yeah, you, you want to make sure that you are exercising. Come on, Anita. You are exercising your prayer life so that you can get the expectation that God has for you. Thank y'all for helping me preach on this thing real quick. So stay connected. Number one, stay connected. You got to stay connected. You got to stay connected so that you can have clarity, but then also so you won't lose your identity. Identity means I dent it. It's the very thing that you leave in this earth that's going to be a, 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 oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? A legacy that you can leave when you know who you are. When I leave here, I want people to know who I am. Who, who, who that girl that wrote that book called There's Power in Your Pain? Who is that girl that's left here with the book called Marriage Survival Guide? You want to be able to know your identity so that you can move in purpose. When you don't know your identity, it's because you're not connected to God. It's because 
we're, I'm going to say we, because we all in this thing together. I'm not pointing no fingers. We, we are not connected. That's the first thing. Stay connected. If you don't know what I'm talking about, characteristics of a godly woman, how do I, what does she look like? What is it? What is, what is the characteristics of a godly woman? Number two, number two, characteristics of, of a godly woman is she don't have no problem submitting. Oh, hey, Lindsay. She have no problem submitting. Can you put on that submitting? I know it's a cuss word. It, it's a cuss word for some of us when you're not staying connected. But it, come here. Come on. Y'all, if you don't know, that's my preaching moment. Come here. Ah, when she's not submitting, when she's not, if she don't have no problem submitting, that's the characteristics of a godly woman. I have no problem. When you have no problem submitting, number one, to God, you got to submit to God. It all goes back to God. I'm sorry. I'm a kingdom. I'm a kingdom pusher. I'm a kingdom builder. I'm a kingdom woman. And I'm about kingdom business. Okay. So I realize that at the end of the day, we have to make sure that number one, when it comes to making sure you have no problem with submitting is that you have no problem submitting to God. Number one. But then you have no problem for those that are married. You have no problem submitting to your husband. Ooh, can I help you real quick and go go watch the YouTube page, okay? Turn your heart, go follow me, subscribe on my page. But look here, how about not just submitting to your husband, but even if that joke ain't in church, even if he ain't acting right because you decided to marry him, you made the choice to say yes, so you still got to submit to him while you're making sure that you're submitting to God. Oh, got to watch the YouTube page so you can really, really see what I'm talking about because I can go deeper on that, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to keep y'all here all day. We Facebook Live, so let me hurry up real quick. How about you got to submit to God, but you got to submit to your husband husband if you're married women you got to submit to your husband the bible says submit to your husband submit in the greek means to come under that means i come under the authority that's in you but the ah uh, the kicker in the twist and i'm probably don't 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 leave me yet don't get mad when i say this if he ain't submitting to god oh that's the kicker when he's not submitting to god you still got to submit to god while you're submitting to him but you cannot compromise because when you compromise you allow him to become stuck in his situation <gasps> that part right there when you come you start compromising because he don't know how to submit you still submit meaning you still make his bacon eggs and grits and all that good stuff and you still make sure you run his back whatever you do in your household with your husband but if he's not submitting to God, if he don't want to go to church, he don't want to show up at church, he don't want to submit to God, you got to make sure you as the woman of the house, you as the woman that's walking in the characteristics of a godly woman is still submitting to God. Still God, because somebody got to in the house, okay? So you got to make sure you're doing that. Number one, submit to God, submit to your husband. But also submit to leadership. Oh, that's when the pastor Tanya rise up in me. You got to submit to leadership because how can you walk with if you're not submitting to leadership? That I always tell people, don't tell me who you over until you tell me who you under. Come on, Dr. R.A. Vernon. You got to be under somebody that can be able to mentor you, that can be able to coach you, that can be able to pastor you. I know you don't want to hear that part. That can be able to pastor you so that you can be covered spiritually. You got to have it. I, I know you probably don't feel like whatever. You got to have all of them because there's no way that I can move in purpose without a pastor. There's no way that I can move in purpose without a mentor. There's no way I can move in purpose without a covering my bitch. There's no way. You got to be able to have somebody that can tell you to sit your butt down somewhere and be still. That can, that can rebuke you. Everybody can't rebuke me. I'm sorry. Everybody can't rebuke me. So you got to be under something. Somebody, you got to submit to leadership. Even when you don't agree with what they're saying. If they ain't doing nothing that's crazy, they ain't cheat. You know, you know what's crazy. You know what's in your spirit. And you know what ain't right. That part. But you got to make sure, we got to make sure that we're under the right leadership that can push us into purpose. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone. You also got to submit to authority. Come here. Somebody say authority. All that talking, I got to drink. Somebody say authority. Hello, April. Somebody say authority. You got to submit to authority. You know, we get it. And again, go watch the YouTube page. Watch the replay. Hello, Norman. Hello, uh, uh, Perkins. Hello. How y'all doing? Hey, go watch the replay. But listen, you got to submit to authority. Oh, because so many times what that means, that means the people on your job, you got to submit to them because them jokers will fire you. That mean the police officer, uh-oh, that mean them jokers can put you in jail. And I share some things on that YouTube page where I made mistakes. You know, again, I'm not perfect because I'm known to have a clap back with anybody trying to tell me, okay, okay, the pastor of the church. 
real and relatable. Okay, real and relevant, whatever. So, not only you have to submit to your husband, you got to submit to God, you got to submit to authority, you got to submit to leadership. You must submit in order to walk in the characteristics of a godly woman. These are the things you got to do. Lastly, and I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this so far. She serves with integrity. The characteristics of a godly woman serves with integrity. She don't mind walking in integrity. Can you type that on the screen? She don't mind walking in integrity. A woman that walks in integrity. A woman that is a woman of her word. Integrity. Somebody say integrity. Integrity. Hello, Minister Miles. Integrity. We must walk in integrity. If you're going to have the characteristics of a godly woman, she must walk in integrity. You got to be a woman of your word. If you're going to call your job and tell your job that you're going to show up, you need to call your friend that's down the road that you said that you was coming to Thanksgiving at their house. And all of a sudden you realize that you weren't going to show up. Call them and let them know when you find out that you weren't going to show up, that you weren't going to show up. I need that to see it. Be a woman of integrity. If you say you ain't going to do it, say you ain't going to do it. If you say you're going to do it, do it. Do what you say. Come on, Nike. Just do it. Serve with integrity. Serve in ministry with integrity. Hello, Minister Miles. Serve in ministry with integrity. Serve on your job in integrity. If you're going to walk on your job, come on. Them jokers going to fire you after a while. And we wonder why we get fired because we done showed up to work late. Come here. Hey, Jocelyn Sugar. Hey, Aunt Kathy. Look. Look, you done showed up to work. I want y'all to go back and watch the replay because I'm almost done. You done showed up to work. And you know you're supposed to be there at 8 o'clock. This is real and real and relevant, okay? I have nothing to do with the Bible. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Real and relevant. Make sure you show up on time. Walk in integrity. That's what God called you to do. Walk in integrity. Be a woman of your word. Don't, don't be that woman to where we think, as soon as I see you, I can't even trust you with nothing because you ain't going to do it because you ain't loyal. What What's the song, These People Ain't Loyal? I know it don't say that. Pray for me. My cousin told me about that song. But hey, hey, sugar. But these people ain't not, you got to be loyal, man. You got to be a woman of your word. You got to say what you're going to do and do what you're going to say and make it happen. Somebody say, just do it. Be a woman of integrity. Now, the rest of it, you got to go find on my YouTube page. Won't he do it? Oh, I, it was a setup. I, just in case you didn't know, sugars. It was a setup. So go subscribe my YouTube page so you can get the other two points. Yes, Lord. But can I tell you this? I will leave you with this. I'm going to tell you this. One woman in the Bible that I find out that walks in the characteristics of a godly woman that she was amazing, okay? This chick was a bad chick because she was able to deal with a fool. Her name was Abigail. Can you type that in the screen? See, I didn't already gave y'all too much. I didn't gave you too much. Go watch the YouTube page now. Go, go subscribe my page, Tanya Harden. Yeah. So the woman that dealt with a fool. See, what happens is, is that when you're not walking in the characteristics of a godly woman, you will end up being a fool with other fools. See, my husband and I find out, we find out from this old couple, and I really am done, find out with this old couple is what happens is, me and my husband decided, you know, we've been together 18 years, right? Been together more than that, but been married 18 years. And we found out this is that we got to be a fool, one fool at a time. This, this couple that was together for... They were together for 40 some years and somebody told us about this story, but they was together for 40 some years. And all of a sudden, while they was together for 40 some years, uh, 50 some years, 60 some, it was a long time. Somebody asked them this question. How did y'all make it? They said, we just be a fool at a time. One person be a fool on one day and one person be a fool on another day. But what happened with Abigail, she had a complete fool. This joker was crazy. He was trying to fight David the king. He did not know how to submit to authority. He was trying to fight David the king. Okay, I ain't giving y'all no more. Go watch the YouTube page. <laughs> Go watch YouTube. Go to my YouTube page. Subscribe me now, Tanya Harden, because I'm going to do a series completely on the characteristics of women, the characteristics of distraction, the characteristics of a godly woman. What does it look like? The characteristics of effective communication. What does it look like? I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. So if you enjoyed this, just the three. Go get the other two on my YouTube page. I love you guys. I thank y'all so much for following me. Remember this, characteristics of a godly woman. Make sure that as a godly woman that you're staying connected to God. You're staying connected, making sure you're submitted. And then what was the other one? You serve with integrity. And then there's two more that I want to give you, but I'm not going to give you right. I'm going to give you God, Jesus, because I feel like I done left you and you're seeing Go look at it. Go to YouTube. Turn your heart. But I want to encourage you. No matter what. As a woman of integrity. Make sure.
that you're walking in integrity and that you're making sure you're staying connected and you're staying committed to God. A woman of integrity makes sure that she ain't just foul. She don't talk crazy because she can. That part. And I am done. We don't just say stuff off the head. Not a godly woman. Yeah, we make mistakes. We mess up. We might go off the people at the at the movie, at the movie, at the family reunion. You know, but you got to fix that. You got to die daily, die to self. That's all I have. I thank y'all so much for joining me. Are y'all mad at y'all want me to finish it? That's okay. I ain't going to finish it. Go to my YouTube page. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing the, <laughs> somebody say yes, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching. Wisdom Wednesday. Until next time, go watch the rest of it on my YouTube page. It's going to drop today by the end of the day today, okay? So go watch it because we as women got to become to see characteristics of a godly woman. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Have wisdom in everything that you do. Make sure you walk in wisdom and don't be no crazy fool out here like Nabal, Abigail, Abigail's. Abigail's husband, don't be no fool. Don't be walking around saying you're a Christian and you acting like a plum fool out here in these streets. Have wisdom. Have wisdom in everything you do. Think about it before you do it. Love you guys. Stay blessed. Thank y'all for watching. Be blessed.